this organism called the Pine Barrens. It is a timeless place with timeless life forms. This is one of those life forms. The lichen. Alright, so the, the body morphology of the lichen comes in three different categories. You have your crustose lichen, which is uh, firmly attached to the substrate. You'd have to remove the substrate to get a sample of it. You'd have to bring rock with you to get an undisturbed sample of it. Crustose lichen. Then the next one is folios. And as the name implies, it is more leaf-like. The third and final form is fruticose. Two hundred and fifty million years of evolution has enabled them to cover seven to eight percent of the Earth's land on all seven continents. Scientists have suggested that lichen can live for five or even ten thousand years. Some grow less than one millimeter per year. So what is a lichen? Crustos. So for a long time, scientists didn't know how to classify the lichen because it is a, I mean, it has chlorophyll in it, right? So it photosynthesizes. I assume they thought it was a plant, you know, a plant growing on another plant. It wasn't until the, uh, the quality of magnification, when, when lenses were developed to a... Uh, to a level that they could investigate the cell structure of these organisms that that uh, it was proposed that it was at least two different organisms um, a fungus and an algae an alga um, the, the first guy that, that proposed that, uh, the, the scientific community completely lambasted him. They uh, denied his credibility and told him he was a kook and whatnot. Um, and then in 1877, uh, as lenses got better and better and better, a guy by the name of Albert Frank uh, was forced to coin the term symbiosis. All right, you've heard of the symbiotic relationship of like clownfish and sea anemones or cleaner wrasse and fish. That comes from lichen. That comes from this organism that we're looking at today, which is just fascinating. A lichen is a combination of fungus and plant. A fungus is a heterotroph. Hetero, meaning other, and troph, meaning nourishment. A heterotroph cannot produce its own food. It can only digest the efforts of another. The other is an autotroph. It can take inorganic matter or sunlight and turn it into food. In the far distant past, fungus captured an algae or cyanobacteria in order to farm it and eat the sugar that it produced. It built a house for it, provided protection from microbes, harmful radiation, slugs, snails, and any other invertebrate that might make a meal of the algae. Fast forward 
They now cover 7 to 8% of all land on Earth. As I'm waiting for the sun to come up, I'm going to explain this to you. The The characteristics of a lichen go like this. So the crustios or crustos is basically like this. Just randomly scattered with no above or below. They're just within the mycelium. The, the chloroplasts and algae are within the structure. And I'm not sure if they have the rhizines or not. These, these roots sticking out down here, you can see them now. Yeah? Right, these roots down here would be the rhizines. Perfect platform for this demonstration, by the way. So the, the uh, folios is kind of like this, where it has an upper surface that has a specific density to allow light in. And then it has a lower surface, maybe to retard the evaporation of water or uh, you know, who knows. And then within the center of this sandwich, the medulla, are your photobionts. These are the chloroplast, chlorophyll cyanobacteria and it doesn't look like this sunrise is going to amount to anything but exist all the way around the outside so this would be like a, a uh, cross section kind of like looking down on this stick that way it would be cross section of it that way you know what i mean and then at the very base of the stick would be your rhizines that's it so these things are able to desiccate to the point of no water mass whatsoever and normally if a plant desiccates these they die lichen not the case freaking amazing absolutely freaking amazing yeah i should just go I, i'm gonna go get some maybe a few more pictures of lichen cryptobiosis is a state of reversible metabolic inactivity. Meaning that when an organism encounters unreasonably harsh environmental conditions, the biology shuts off. They cease to live. Then when conditions become favorable again, they will come back to life. And hydrobiosis is cryptobiosis from lack of water. The word anhydrobiosis means life without water. Poikilohydric is the inability to regulate water content. Lichen are poikilohydric. This means that they have the same amount of moisture as the air and substrate that surround them. During dry periods, they will desiccate and enter a cryptobiotic state. Then when the rain returns, they will reanimate and life begins again. Some lichen make this transition on a daily basis. They spring to life in the morning dew and then return to inactivity during the heat of the day over and over and over. Oh, look at this. There's lichen growing. The crustose lichen is growing on the, the outside of the moss. It is actually growing on the moss. Good heavens. Oh, look at that landscape right there. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. 
This stuff is everywhere. You don't even notice it unless you're looking for it. And then when you start seeing it, good heavens. It is, it's, it's, it's not a plant. The parent material of all of this is mushroom, which is probably why I enjoy it so much. It is just, oh, oh my goodness. Reproduction. This takes three forms in lichen. The first is fragmentation, and it is as simple as it sounds. Break a piece off, and it already has everything it needs to carry on. The second and third are ceridium and isidium. So the ascidia is a protuberance or protrusion out of the cross section of the lichen body, if you will. And the protuberance will have both the mycelia and some chlorophyll. And this thing is meant to break off when, uh, you know, gust of wind, an animal, big goofy guy in an orange hoodie uh, comes by it'll break off and then this will be the parent of another another organism and it has everything it needs it has the uh, the fungal uh, mycobiont and it also has the the chlorophyll the other one is uh, Soridia S-O-R-E-D-I-A and again this would be the the uh, cross section of the medulla or the the leaf and then these are just tiny tiny little things like kind of I would imagine a little larger than spores with just a just a sprinkling of what it would need to grow the chlorophyll that is um, so the, the Soridia appears on a tree as a powdery, like fluffy, kind of like this snow we got last night. Very fluffy, uh, easily disturbed, uh, can become airborne, I would imagine. And then the Ascidium is a little bit heavier with more material in it. I think that's the case. Does the algae or cyanobacteria really benefit from this relationship and the argument goes kind of like this where neither can exist without the other uh, an alga that desiccates in that manner dies so algae need water well we're besides this lake being is frozen lake anyway besides that frozen lake being there this lichen is, is clearly far away from water, right? The algae in this lichen are quite a distance from the water. So the argument kind of goes, well, the algae is benefiting. Its domain has been greatly enhanced. Its uh, range, the, uh, the, the ability to live on land would not have occurred had it not been for it being captured by the fungus. Um, yeah, kind of a kind of a uh, an argument over this apparently. Let's see what else can I tell you, and then quit because uh, boy howdy is it cold. This was the uh, sustained. This was the coldest camping trip that I've been on. It's been uh, 19, I think it was 27 degrees at one point yesterday, but it's been 16 to 19 degrees for... I've been in the unreasonable cold for three days and two nights. But it's all for this. 
that sunrise. Wow. Just stunning, huh? Such a magical place, the Pine Barrens. And the lichen. I'll leave that there, let it really freak somebody out. I think there's a Blair Witch roaming the woods here. In fact, let's make it a little bit more menacing. 